Hello, I'm Atubo George and I bless God for what he's doing in your life and for this great opportunity of, you know, ministering his, his truths to you. And I also want to encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and put on the notification. Now, every day, every weekday by 5.30 a.m., our messages are up on YouTube. They are the first to get it. So if you, if you put on that notification, you know, you will get that message 5.30 on the dot. It will, it, the notification will come on, you know our message has been posted. Praise God. So you can watch it before we start sending on, on every other um, channel. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, we bless you today. Knowledge and understanding comes from you. And Lord, we receive the fullness of it today. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I declare right now, burdens are being lifted. Yokes are being destroyed by the power of the Holy Spirit from everyone watching and listening right now. Thank you for healings that are taking place even as your word is being ministered. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we, are, we were reading Jeremiah chapter 31 yesterday. And I said I was going to go deep into it today. So let's go verse 34. Now God was speaking and he said, look, I'm going to make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. And he says, not like the old one. What was the old covenant? He gave them a set of laws. And he said, they should keep it. If you keep this law, then you'll be fine. And God looked at they couldn't even keep it. Praise <laughs> God. They, they couldn't. Because their righteousness was based on the keeping of those laws. But they couldn't. So God says, hey, that's not the original. Now, that was not even the plan from the beginning when God gave them the law. This is, God had to do that because they couldn't function the way God wanted to function with them. You remember God had said, all of you come to the mountain. I want to speak to you together. So they would all have heard his voice. But he couldn't stand it. See, once the glory of God that preceded him showed up, they all said, Moses is enough. You go and hear him. Come and tell us everything he tells you. Now God says, no, I'm actually going back to the original plan. And what is it? That I will put my laws in your heart and in your mind. What does that mean? Every child of God will know what it is to please God. So now it's not going to be the function of disobedience. You know, you it's not going to be, I don't know what to do. No, it's going to be, mm, I know what to do, but I, I chose not to do it. As if you don't want to serve God, if you don't want to please God. The excuse of I didn't know is gone. Now we can really now quote Ignorance of the law is not an excuse, <laughs> praise God. Because God says, I'm putting the law in their hearts and in their minds. Then he says here, he says, No more shall every man teach his neighbor and every man his brother. That's verse 34. Saying, Know the Lord, for they all shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of them, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and their sin, I will remember no more. So number one, sin is not going to be an obstacle. It's not going to be an obstacle. Why is it not going to be an obstacle? You see, because the moment you begin to operate from faith that God has put in your heart, Sin goes. Oh, yeah. You know, sometimes you find people, eh, why, why don't you serve God? Mm, I know myself. I know the wrong things I used to do. So, see, leave this thing, leave this thing. You don't realize that it is in the serving of the Lord that sin leaves you. Because now you are busy. Most times people are thinking, let me get done with this sin. Let me erase myself or erase this sin from my life. Then I'll be clean to approach God and serve him. No, sir. That's not how it works. You get busy with the Lord. He is now your master and you take yourself out of the bondage of sin. It's as simple as that. Get busy with the Lord. 
you will not have time for iniquity. Just like the scripture told us in Galatians chapter 5, it says, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. It's as simple as that. You don't say, oh, I've been fulfilling the desires of the flesh too much. I want to stop fulfilling the desires of the flesh so that I will walk in the spirit. You've been saying that for the past 10 years. Nothing has changed. You know why? Because that's not how it is done. How is it done today? Begin to walk in the spirit. As you walk in the spirit, let me tell you this. If God speaks to you now, you are broke, you are looking for money, you, you, you have creditors on your neck. And God says to you, hey son, in three days, I will give you all that money you need. And then you heard his voice. Now, guess what? You will set yourself, three days, right? Yeah, I will wait for God. You will set yourself to wait and obey God. Now, within that, just three days, if someone comes to you and says, hey, there's one deal, there's one wrong thing that we need to do, we'll just get all the money we need. What are you going to do? Nah, no, 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 no. Why? Because God has told me in three days, he is supplying this money. See? But if that hope wasn't there, you know what you're doing? When, when, when you say, I will wait for God, you're walking in the Spirit. So as you're walking in the Spirit, you will not fulfill that desire of the flesh inviting you to go do wrong, to get money. That's just how it works. So you pay attention to what the Lord is saying and doing in your life, you will not have time for it to, to spend on iniquity. Praise God. So he says, I will put my law. So he says, I will forgive them their iniquity and their sin I will remember no more. So sin is done away with. And then he says, no more shall everyone, verse 34, say, no, one, no more shall every man teach his neighbor and every man his brother saying, know the Lord. So what are we going to be doing then? We I'll tell you what we're going to be doing. We're going to be sharing our testimony. See, you know, Amongst believers, this is, this is something we need to really pay attention to. If you are a child of God and you don't have friends that spur you on by way of their testimony, you won't go far. What I mean, way of their testimony. You, you should be around people who are telling you, do you know what the Lord told me this morning? So, yeah, what did he tell you? He began to explain Chronicles chapter 2 and verse 14 to me, man, I never saw it that way. Say, really, what is, wow, wow. And then you begin to explain. I begin to teach. The so, wow, wonderful. That is true. And then tomorrow, a person comes and says, man, do you know what the Lord told me today? Say, what did he tell you? you? You remember that parable Jesus gave about, say, yeah, man, the Lord opened my understanding. He taught me what that parable really is and I'm so blessed right now. I, you, you, I, I don't get the, the Lord. Why is it not happening in my life? Praise God. See, that's how we spur one another to godliness. So the other person goes back and says, ah, no, 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 no. How can this person be getting all the remas and I'm getting no, I'll pray. I will, I will wait on God. I will ask questions. I will study. Yeah, that's how it works. So the kind of fellowship we will be having, according to what he's saying here, is sharing our testimonies. Nobody's going to say, this is how you must do it. That's what he meant here. No one's going to say to his neighbor, know the Lord. No, no, no. He says, everyone will know me. So what are we going to be doing with one another? Sharing testimonies. Not testimonies of just, I just bought a new cow. Praise God, celebrate with me. No, not just those kind of testimonies. Those are, those are testimonies for babies. Oh, I just got a new house. It's testimony for babies. You want to know what mature testimony looks like? Oh, you're, you're driving by a house. And then the Lord says to you, he says, son, next week, I'll give you that house. And then you look at yourself. You look at your bank account. What do you mean, Lord? Give me that house. How? Where? For how, how, how possible is it going to be? But you know you have heard the Lord. Because you can't sleep anymore. You are just thinking about that. And then you get to that point and say, Lord, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do? And then the Lord says, go. I want you to go there and stand in front of the house and point it and say, house, I receive you. 
And he said, hmm, just that. I said, yeah, just that. Okay, I'll go. And then you get there, you see soldiers in front of the house. <laughs> hey, God, I think you have planned for them to arrest me today. <laughs> Is this the plan? <laughs> you know? And then you, you look around, you, you're just feeling, if I even stand here to raise my hand, they'll think, ah, no, you drive past. And I said, hmm, maybe I'll come. The Lord said, go and do it. Lord, please don't let them arrest me. And then you now go and stay in one corner and make sure no one is looking at you. Say, house? <laughs> I, you see, now, what's that? Now, uh, that's someone who's walking with the Lord. I'll never forget this, 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 this same thing happened to me a few years ago. You know, my wife and I were thinking of buying a double bunk bed for our children because they were increasing. So we needed um, a spare bed in their room. So we needed a double bunk bed. And I'll go to the shop. I'll see the price. And I just couldn't get myself. I wanted something good. But then I couldn't get myself to accept that one has to pay all this money for just a bed. How? How? No, no, no. So I kept telling myself, this price has to come down. I'll go there, you know, anytime I go there, I'll look at it. Ah, this price is still up. It's got to come down. I kept saying that. And then I'll, I remember one day, I went there. As I got there, I, I saw it. So I wanted to say, ah, this thing, I heard the Holy Spirit speak to me. and say, son, until you accept that that is the price, I will not give it to you. You need to accept it first. Then I'll give it to you. Oh, I said, okay. Now, now I, I saw where I've been going wrong. I've been thinking of me paying for it. I've been thinking of, you know, getting that money and letting that money leave me. And, you know, that's what I've been thinking. And I said, okay, 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 Lord, I get it now. So I repented. I said, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for thinking of myself. So I stood there in that shop and I pointed at that price tag and I said, this is the price of a double bunk bed. And I receive it. I, I, you know, I, told, I can pay this amount of money for a double bunk bed. So I receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Now this happened and I, 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 had a, I was going for a meeting. So on my way, I had to stop to buy something, you know, in that shop. So that was when I did that. And then I got to the meeting. Forgot about what happened earlier. After the meeting, I saw a message on my phone. And someone says, oh, we, we just thought of giving you this double bunk bed and sent the picture. And I looked at it like, what? Like somebody said, please, um, if you don't mind, you know, of course the Lord laid it in their hearts. And like, if you don't mind, we, we, we want to give you this double bunk bed. I, I looked at it. I'm like, what's going on here? And the funny thing is this. When I in that shop, the particular double bunk bed I saw, I was telling myself, I, I, would, I would prefer a wooden one. Not, not, uh, the one they had there was a metal one. I would prefer a wooden one. But then I know this has got to be the price. And guess what? The one we received was more expensive in price compared to the one in that shop. And we got it free. <laughs> you see? So, until we, until I received it. Now, what's that? Now, that's a testimony. Now, what's the testimony? The word of the Lord came to me. And I repented before the Lord and I received that as the price of the... Now, you see, that's what a testimony, a real testimony. The testimony is not just that we got a double bunk bed. The testimony is, hey, we entered into God's operation and then we, we saw the result of it. So we got it. Praise God. See, that's how God works. So... We, now, I share that testimony. Someone hears it and say, Oh, I see why I've not gotten that car yet. Wow, wow, 
Wow. No, I don't have to tell the person, hey, this is how to get a car. No, I just shared what, what I experienced with the Lord. And someone takes that and goes back and says, Lord, you know, it ministers to your heart. And say, Lord, now I understand why I've not gotten that car yet. I've been cheating. Oh, oh, Lord, have mercy on me, Lord. I repent. I've been saying that car is too expensive. I repent, Lord. I repent. I repent. Lord, please forgive me. And he goes back and says, look. And then he gets a testimony. See, that's how we multiply testimonies in our lives amongst brethren. Praise God. I've got to stop here now. I'll continue tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye.